Hi there, welcome to Computer Science 30S. This is Liberty Basic Unit, uh, Lesson 2, and today we'll be looking at left string, mid string, and right string. So after this lesson, you'll understand what those three functions do, how they work, and you'll be able to follow instructions on how to create a password checker program. And there's an assignment at the end that includes uh, checking for proper postal code, postal code uh, format. So let's get started. Uh, left, left string, mid string, and right string. These functions remove single characters or groups of characters from strings. They all do the same thing, really, uh, but their starting points are different depending on what is needed. And so you pick and choose which one you use depending on what your specific task is. Left string is sort of the one that is uh, first looked at. Uh, left string removes characters starting from the left of the string, and you can remove as many characters as you wish. So, for example, name string is uh, Jonathan, spelled that way and you want to get the first initial, the J out, you could say that initial string is equal to left string, uh, bracket, name string, comma, one. And so what this does is it takes the first letter, that's what the one is for, out of name string. Uh, that's what the left string function does. It takes the first character out of name string and it stores it as initial string. And when you print initial equals initial string, you'll get the letter J. So that's how left string works. If you want to try that little piece of code, pause the video and try that. You can, uh, you can adjust play with the number one there and see what happens. Uh, if you did that and you changed the number to a two, you would get the first two letters equal to J-O. A uh, little note here, if the number's in the bracket, in, uh, if the number in the bracket is zero or less, then the, then the empty or null string will be returned. And if the number is greater than or equal to the number of characters in a string, then the entire string will be returned. So in other words, uh, these two examples down below. So you can see down here, when I use the number 0, I get nothing for my initials. And when I use the number 10, there's more than 10 letters here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I just get Jonathan. Okay, now right string works exactly the same, except that it starts counting from the right. So for, if you, for example, if you said print right string, bracket, quote, I'm right-handed, comma, 12, it counts from 12 from the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is the space, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it would print right-handed. Uh, again, notice that the space between the words and handed is counted as a character. So the space is in spot number 7. Uh, again, uh, note if the number in the brackets is 0 or less than 0, if it's a negative, then the null string or empty string will be returned. If the number is greater than or equal to the number of characters in the string, then once again, the entire string will be returned. Uh, mid string is a little bit different. It removes characters from the middle of a word. It can start from any position and remove as many characters as you want. So generally, the generic format is um, mid string uh, is the function name, and then you give it the string to work with. The index is the starting position. That's the first number, and then number, which is optional, uh, the number refers to the length of characters to remove, and it, again, is optional, and if left out, the function returns all of the characters starting at the index to the end of the string. So much like left string, uh, but it goes all the way kind of thing. So, for example, if a really long word string is this long, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and if you said word inside the word string is mid string, really long word string, 9, comma 2, it would count over to spot number 9, which is the I, and take two letters. So from the I, one, two, and you'd produce the, uh, the characters I and F. These three functions can be used for a variety of reasons. Here's a couple examples. Uh, rearranging words in a letter, scrambling. Uh, cryptography is huge in the uh, internet business. Uh, so being able to pull out characters is uh, very important. Uh, some type of function that will do that, very much dependent upon the language, but every language would have a way to do that. Um, so that would be one, scrambling, and the other one would be removing letters to check letters or digits in a password to see if passwords are match the uh, requirements, and we're going to be talking about that today. Passwords are a vital part of today's online presence. Websites generally want users to have strong passwords that have certain restrictions, and this is pretty much true everywhere. You all know this. Uh, restrictions might include things like including both upper and lower case, be greater than seven characters, including a digit, and including a symbol. So I'm going to create a program with you that checks the user's password for these restrictions. Uh, I'm going to be giving you some tips here and some uh, some help, and you're going to be creating this as we move along. So I'd like you to create a short program that opens a new window that looks like this one. You could use Freeform. If you haven't learned Freeform yet, it's certainly time that you did. Call me over, 
remind me, uh, remind yourself how to work it. Uh, very, very helpful. Will save you a lot of time. Uh, then checks to make sure that the first name and last name fields are not blank, and that the password entered matches the criteria. So it should look sort of like this: first name, last name, password. Uh, let's begin with the pseudocode. Remember, pseudocode is simply a plan for the program, and it's very important. It's one of the first things you should do is create a bit of a plan, and it will help your coding go much smoother. So first step, set up the window, get the password, uh, get the contents of the password text box, set all the flags to no, and I'm going to explain this right away. Uh, check the length of the password. If it's not 6 to 24, then ask for a resubmit. And if it is in the correct uh, length, then we're going to do use a for loop to the end of the password. I'm going to get every individual letter from password. Now, the way this is going to work is simply this. Let's go back to our flag comment. Flag is simply a variable that stores a yes or no or true or false value. Essentially, it stores whether or not something actually happened or did not happen. Um, in Scratch, you use them. They tended to be more along the lines of the broadcast thing in Scratch, but flags are sometimes used. Um, when something happens, uh, you set a flag. A flag is like a signal kind of thing. Uh, so in this case, the flag is set to no. Password checks are not true yet. If we find an uppercase letter, we'll set the uppercase flag to yes. So in other words, we're going to assume that the password is bad, and only when we find that the particular criteria has met, then we're going to set the flag to yes. And we're only going to let the password stand or work if all the flags are indeed true or yes. So we get we pull out an individual letter from the password. We check for if it's uppercase or not. If it is, we set the flag. If it's lowercase, we set the flag. If it's a digit, we set the flag. And if it's a symbol, we set the flag. We can go through the entire password. We're going to loop through. And then when we're done, if all the flags are yes, we print an appropriate message. The password is good to go. If any flag is no, then print the appropriate message and ask for a resubmit. Okay, so it's a way to tell which ones, what, what criteria has not been met. OK, let's begin here. If you haven't used Freeform before, you should try that. Here is the code that sets up for Freeform. And if you need to pause the video, you can. And I'll be posting this code online as well. OK, so there's the code there that will get the uh, window on the screen. Hopefully, you remember some of that stuff. If not, have another look at that and see if you can remember how that works. Uh, the next thing in our pseudocode is to set all flags to no, so I'm going to run a CLS, which clears the main window, and then I'm going to set all my flags to default. Length flag string is the null string. Uppercase flag is no, lowercase flag is no, digit flag is no, symbol flag is also no. Everything's set to default. Then we're going to check if the length of the password was correct. We're going to get the length of the password by using the len feature. Length password is equal to len bracket password. That gets the length. And then we're going to check to see if it's less than 6 or if it's greater than 24. And if that's true, then the length flag becomes no. And we're going to print, your password does not contain the correct number of characters. Please resubmit. I'm just going to need an end if there as well. Oh, sorry. Then we're going to use an else. Right. So if the password does not contain the correct number of characters, we automatically resubmit. We don't even bother checking anything else. If it, uh, if it does match the correct length, then we're going to check each letter and set flags if it matches restrictions. So we're going to go for x equals 1 to the length of the password. We're going to loop through the characters of the password. Notice how the comment here explains what's going on. We're going to tip, uh, assign a, char a variable called check character string is equal to mid string uh, bracket password comma x comma 1. So the x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is the start value. And we're always going to remove a single character, so we're just going to leave a number 1 right here. And then we're going to find the ASCII value, the ASCII code number for the character. We're going to do that by go writing ASC value is equal to ASC of check character string. The next step is to check for uppercase letter. So if the ASCII value is bigger than or equal to 65 and less than or equal to 90, in other words, between those two, then we set the flag uppercase flag to yes. If the ASCII value is between 97 and less than 122, then we're going to check. Uh, this is the check for the lowercase, and we're going to set the lowercase flag to yes. The next thing we're going to check is the digit. If the ASCII value is between 48 and 57, then the digit flag is yes. And then here's the symbol check. 
a little bit tricky because the symbols are all sort of over the map on the ASCII value, but it's a good example of using ands and ors. So if the ASCII value is greater than 33 and less than 47, in other words, between those values, or if it's bigger than 58 and less than 64, between those values, or between 91 and 96, then it is indeed a symbol, and we're going to set our symbol flag to yes. And we end that if. Next x simply goes to the next character. So every character, every uh, value character in the password is checked against these. And it doesn't matter if you've got more than one uppercase letter. It's just going to reset the flag to yes. Uh, should be relatively quick. Even if it's a long password, it's not going to be more than about 20 or 30 characters. And it won't take long to zip right through that. Then the last thing is uh, print the message. If the length of flag is no, then print, uh, uh, then wait because you're going to resubmit. Otherwise, print the appropriate statement. So if the uppercase flag is yes, and the lowercase flag is yes, and the digit flag is yes, and symbol flag is yes, then um, we're going to close the main window, and your password is correct. Otherwise, we're going to check here, print the following errors. Errors occur within your password. Please resubmit. If the uppercase flag is no, then print no uppercase letter exists. Uh, if the lowercase flag is no, then say no lowercase flag exists. If the digit flag is no, then there's no digit. And if the symbol flag is no, then there's no symbol. And then we have a wait at the bottom to re-submit if there are any errors. Notice that this actually tells you exactly what's wrong with the password. And if there's multiple things wrong, it only prints out what's wrong. It doesn't just say there's an error. OK, so you should now have a working copy of the password checker. You may have had to pause the video from time to time. If not, uh, you can get one on the Schoology page. I would encourage you, though, to sort of try to type that in rather than just copying it. Uh, play around with that. Make sure that you can figure out how the password checker works before you move on in the video. So your assignment is uh, to modify, uh, use your password checker program as a template. Uh, modify it to check a person's postal code. When people type in their postal code in a website, uh, they want to make sure that you are answering a valid post postal code. Uh, there are some certain postal code rules for Canada. One is that it's exactly seven characters long. Uh, number two, it must have a space. It's character number four. The middle one must be a space. It must follow the order letter, the order, uh, letter, digit, letter, and then a space, and then digit, letter, digit. And the letter uh, letters must be uppercase. So, for example, R7N space 2V6 is valid because it's seven characters long. It has a space right there in number four. It does follow the order letter, digit, letter, number, letter, digit, or sorry, letter, digit, letter, digit, letter, digit, and so on. R0J uh, one, space 1H0 one is valid. R7N 2V6 is not valid because it does not have the space. Uh, R, this is an O, not a J, so it has to have a number there. So there's two things wrong with this one here. Okay, so that is your assignment. Uh, please ask for help if you need it, and good luck with that.